I'm Chef Paul McCormick from the Culinary Arts and Hospitality Department here at, at Community College of Philadelphia. Today we're going to talk about squash, specifically spaghetti squash and acorn squash, kind of the underused uh, squashes in the squash family. We're used to zucchini, um, we're used to eggplant, we're used to yellow squash, they get used widely. They're softer flesh, they're easier to saute and get through. Acorn squash and spaghetti squash are a little bit tougher. They're tougher on the outside, they're tougher on the inside, they require a little bit more treatment, but I'm going to show you two dishes today that are going to make them a lot easier to deal with and a lot more rich in how we deal with the flavors of unused squash. Okay, let's begin. In order to get spaghetti squash, this is a spaghetti squash, it looks like it, it actually looks more like a melon than a squash. It's hard on the outside, it's very fibrous. One of the things that's beautiful about spaghetti squash is when we're finished cooking this, you're going to see it looks like spaghetti. This is what we're going to finish, I'm going to saute with red onions and shiitake mushrooms for a beautiful vegetable side dish. Okay, it's wonderful. Acorn squash, which looks like a green pumpkin, is also rather hard, tough to deal with, but with a little bit of time and a little bit of effort will be beautiful. I'm going to make a butternut apple squash soup. Very, very simple, takes a little bit of time, but the outcome is beautiful. But here again, both of these squash are both really hard, really tough to deal with, but with a little bit of time and care, it'll be beautiful. Okay, I'm going to start with the spaghetti squash because that'll take the most amount of time. First, what I want to do is there's two ways. You can boil this or roast it. Either one, it's going to take probably about 45 minutes to cook it. So I'm going to do, first thing I want to do is I want to get it in half. To get the knife through, this is kind of tough. It's almost dangerous. This rolls around, and like I've said before in some of the other, the other episodes, if we don't have this set, I could really cut myself. So I'm going to do this, this style. Plunge the knife straight down into it. Until it hits the board, I'm going to hold this steady and push like a cleaver. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I already have the hole in here, straight down with the knife. I'm not putting my fingers anywhere near the cutting part of the blade. I'm just going to push down until I cut it in half. Now you can see what I'm talking about. It's still rock hard. This is more similar to a pumpkin than it is anything else. The seeds are large, but this flesh is really, really tough and hard. Now what I want to do is I'll take a peeler. And what I want to do is I want to get the seeds out. You can do this with a spoon, but this is, this is relatively tough. I don't want to cut it out, but with the peeler, I can scrape out enough of this, the seed pod. And if you look at the seeds, they're, they're a lot like pumpkin seeds. All right. Now, what I'm doing is when I get all the inside flesh out, I'm not even going to season this because I'm going to season the final product. You can, but for my dish today, I want to, I'm going to have mushrooms in it and onions, which are the flavor is going to be transferred from the squash or to the squash from the other items I'm going to put in the dish. Peel these away. Get rid of my center. The same thing on this one. Take the insides out. It's tough. It doesn't come out real easy. But this is almost like an edge. I can use this with a bigger spoon as well, but for my purposes, I want the peeler because I can actually use it just like a knife, but because of the way that the peeler's curved, I'm not going to carve into the flesh and basically what I can carve it out easier with a curved peeler. If we're going to boil this, one of the things that we do is we pierce the skin. We pierce the skin because we want it to evaporate we want water to get in and heat to get out and steam to get out. I'll do the same thing. I'm going to put one or two holes in the outside of this because I'm going to roast this flesh side down. Okay, the skin will help. This will help vent moisture out of the outside from the inside to the outside. This will also have the skin protect the flesh inside from getting too caramelized. All right. Now, as simple as that, I can butter the pan. I'm just going to put them in whole into this roasting pan. I'm going to put these in the oven for at least 25 minutes to half an hour. The way I'm going to tell if they're done is I'm press against the flesh and it'll be nice and soft. Let me stick this in the oven. All right. While that's cooking, I'm going to get ready to do my acorn squash. 
The acorn squash, I'm going to roast as well. I'm gonna cut it into wedges and do the same seeding process. Again, very, very tough squash. Same way, I'm gonna lay it as flat as I can. I'm gonna stick the knife in so that I don't have to move the knife around. My pressure is always directly down onto my cutting board with my blade. Same thing here, I'm on this side. Again, this is tough. Same thing. Okay, I have my wedges. I'm gonna cut this down again. Because I'm gonna make soup out of this, I'm gonna want a little bit more, so I'm gonna cut my other one as well. Again, I'm gonna take my peeler and scoop out, this comes right out, scoop out as much of this flesh as I can. This is orange, this looks more like a pumpkin, it's not as dark as a pumpkin, but if I do this to this, I can also make pumpkin soup the same way that I make the butternut squash soup. I'll change it, I'm changing the flavor a little bit, but I'm still gonna end up using squash, this acorn squash, and I can repeat this or use the same type of recipe or the same type of method of preparation that I, they do with a, with a uh, pumpkin. All right, clean these out. All right, here again, the seeds. Seeds make nice snack. A lot of people I know who grow their own pumpkins, harvest the seeds and toast their seeds, salt them and toast them. You can buy pumpkin seeds shelled, used for salads. A lot of salad bars use those. Let me cut this other squash up. They're a little unwieldy, which means if you don't get them right the first time, they put up a little bit of a fight, but I think I'm a little bit bigger than it's an acorn squash. As I clean these, okay, I'm going to season these with a little bit of um, turmeric, coriander, and cumin, which are three ingredients that are in curry. Because what I'm going to do is I'm not gonna make a curry soup, I'm gonna use curry as a flavor in a butternut squash soup. I'm gonna have apples in there too and leeks. It's gonna be very, it's gonna be a hot and sweet type of soup. It's gonna have cream in it, but it's gonna have a flavor that's absolutely gorgeous. What I wanna do is I'm gonna use some of these squash when I roast them to dice as garnish, and some of the flesh I'm gonna puree, actually put through a food mill. Now a food mill is different than a food processor. Before we had Robocoots and Cuisinarts, there's a mouthful. What we generally like to do is we used to use a food mill and press it through. The same way I use cheesecloth or a chinois or some of the other straining pieces of equipment, the food mill's a little different. It presses it through. So it, I'm not straining out chunks, I'm actually mashing it together. So as I mash this stuff together and use some of the acorn squash flesh, I'll end up with a nice um, a different type of puree. It's actually gonna be mashed and not pureed. It's not gonna be pureed with a knife. So these, I'm not gonna do anything to these except add some of my seasoning. Now I'm not adding salt. I'm gonna stick these in here. I'm gonna save these two, or this one, for comparison so you see what a cooked one is as opposed to a raw one. Now the turmeric, just like I do with a lot of other seasonings, I'm gonna put it in my hand first and then 18 inches above, spread it out. Turmeric is also yellow food coloring. It tends to make everything, they use this in as a basis for a lot of um, chicken flavoring items, ramen noodles, all that yellow stuff actually comes from turmeric. Curry itself is a blending of a bunch of seasonings and it's usually, these three seasonings are it, usually in different, in different um, concentrations. There's no sugar, Ooh, this is very, very flavorful. If you're allergic, you'll be sneezing all over the place. This is all I wanna have happen here. I'm gonna roast these as they sit, just with heat. When these are finished, it'll be a beautiful looking product. These also go in a high oven. Okay. Now. 
I kind of cheated. I already put the spaghetti squash in the oven. I'm pulling spaghetti squash out that's fully cooked and ready to go. Let me take them out, let them get cooled. While the acorn squash is roasting, I can finish this dish that quickly. So right now my spaghetti squash is finished. I can tell because from the outside I'm pressing down and the flesh is soft, but the shell on the outside kept the flesh from getting too worked up or too worked over. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a spoon and I'm going to pull the flesh out from the inside. And as you see, it actually looks kind of like spaghetti. It's the fibrous nature of this squash. Ouch. It's very hot. Okay. It's stringy. It's starchy, surprisingly enough. All right. That's a side. I'm going to pull this out. Do the same thing on this side. You can do this when it's cool. I prefer when it's hot comes out nice. I'm going to let this cool a little bit before I finish my dish. It's nice and stringy. I'll let this cool. To finish this simple side dish, I'm going to cut my, my onions and my, my uh, shiitake mushrooms julienne. I'm going to finish these in a saute pan, shells I don't need, okay? As this cools, I'll be able to pull this flesh apart and actually use it in the, the finished side dish. So let me set this aside, finish with my spoon, and now I'm going to cut up my garnish. For color, I want to use red onion. Real simple, peel it. Cut through the root as we usually do. The root usually helps hold it together, but in this case I want julienne, so I've removed the root. Cut it lengthwise into the side of the onion. Again, if you don't want to cry, you refrigerate your onions or you cut very, very fast. I try and do both. Okay, a julienne onion. The same amount I'm going to julienne my shiitake mushrooms. Now, as before, when we saute mushrooms, the very most important part that we're going to have is the pan has to be hot, one layer of mushrooms, butter, because I want them to caramelize. The different flavor you get with a caramelized onion or caramelized um, uh, mushroom is phenomenal. If you don't do that and get the high temperature to caramelize and create the Maillard process, with the sugars that are in the mushroom, it turns mushy and you don't get the same flavor that I want with a caramelized shiitake, champignon, um, any other type of mushroom that I happen to be using. I want it to not burn, but you can only have one layer in the pan when you go to saute. All right. These are my mushrooms. These are my onions. The question is, what do I do first? My spaghetti squash is done. All I'm going to do is be pulling this, the shreds apart and adding them to the other two flavor ingredients in my dish. This is fully cooked and ready to go. Actually, not flavorful at all because I didn't add any seasoning to this at all. But delicious. I'm going to add salt and pepper to these. The only strong flavor I have in this dish is the onions. It's important for me to get the onions tender first. So first I'm going to saute my onions. Saute pan. Turned up high. I'm going to add butter. Butter does burn, which means I caramelize it, which means I want the, the flavor. Instead of using oil that I've said before won't burn, I want to use butter because I do want it this, to burn or caramelize just a little bit. So I'm going to have butter. I want the butter in the pan. Once this starts sizzling, I know that the temperature has come up high enough to start vaporizing the water, and that means it's getting hot enough for me to saute. All right. It'll start to sizzle in a second, and I'll add my onions. One layer. You can hear it sizzle. 
one layer of the onions. When these are finished, I'm going to take them out and put them on a plate. When I take them out and put them on the plate, I want the pan to stay hot. I'm going to add my butter. And after my butter is ready like this again and starting to make a little bit of noise, I'm going to add my one pan layer of mushrooms. The ingredients aren't as important in this step as the method in which I use them. I'm adding three things to one dish, each with a unique flavor. The fibrous nature and actually slightly sweet texture of the spaghetti squash, which is beautifully roasted and it actually looks beautiful like spaghetti. I have the very nutty, tender flavor of the shiitake mushrooms and the sh what raw, a sharp flavor in the onions that's going to turn a very sweet caramel color. So I want to take the sharpness out of the oven onion by sauteing it. And as I saute it, I actually am starting to see a little bit of caramelization. I want a little bit of brown on them because that means I'm bringing the sugar out. Between the nice nutty flavor of the, the mushrooms, the sweet taste of the spaghetti squash, and the nutty, now, now the caramelized sweet flavor of this, I'm going to have a beautiful blend of three different flavors on one side plate that, as you can see, other than roasting the, the, roasting the, the squash, takes very little time. So this can be prepped ahead of time, the day before a meal, in order to make this beautiful thing happen as you're roasting something or steaming something or adding another protein. We can add a little bit more texture and flavor to the plate with this as a side dish. But spaghetti squash gets overlooked because of the little bit of difficulty, and you saw how difficult it really was, to cut it in half and roast it for half an hour before we even start. So if you do that prep the day ahead of time, it makes your finished product and the usability of a spaghetti squash Ten times better. Here again, letting this, now I'm getting beautiful caramelization here. The smell of this changes. Remember, when we add heat to a cellulose product or a vegetable product, it changes the nature and texture of the finished product. It's beautiful. That's kind of what we want to get after. Okay, once that's off, and these are going to be ready in a few minutes. Once I get them tender all the way through and the butter has done its job and the heat of the pan has done its job, this is something, as you see, it takes very, very little bit of time to finish everything up. My plate, my onions, right onto the same plate. The pan, still smoking hot, right back on the flame. A little bit more butter, not a lot. We love butter. All right, this is starting to sizzle right away. Coating of butter in the pan. My mushrooms in one layer. I don't want them doubled up or stacked up. One layer, absorbing the butter and doing the, the exact same thing. The pan's still hot, it's caramelizing. It's a beautiful thing. They're not sticking, they're absorbing the fat. They're absorbing the flavor. Still, I haven't added any salt or pepper yet. Salt or pepper are added at the very, very end. I want these flavors to be almost natural. I used salted butter, so there's salt in the butter that will affect, chemically will affect everything that I saute with the butter. So at the very end, I'll add a little, and I mean a little, salt and pepper at the end to finish. I'm adding my onions right back to my mushrooms. Now, I have two or three little colors here going on. I have a brown caramel. I still have a slightly red that has turned almost purple. And I have a brown and a very, very light tan. I'm going to add to that this beautiful yellow spaghetti squash. Now, this is cool enough now for me to touch with my fingers. I'm pulling it apart using the, the nature that comes with this beautiful spaghetti squash. Some of this is caramelized from the baking process. Okay, beautiful. Okay, just enough for a plateful. It's my mushrooms. I cut the mushrooms and the onions julienne to match the size and shape of this. Okay, again, another tablespoon full of butter just to make it not stick on the bottom. I'm adding my flavor and my fat. I'm not supposed to add fat, but I do. We love fat. 
my salt. I don't need a lot of salt, I just need the flavor of salt. So I'll do it in my hand like I usually do, 18 inches above. Just a nice little spray on the top. Oh, over twice. Remember, that's a trick. I'm pulling a hot pan towards me, everything will come up. Fly over, whoa, fly over. This is also how I blend it, how I mix it all together. There's enough here, one spaghetti squash can serve about eight people. I can actually take what I have left here, and as this gets cold, this makes a wonderful salad. Now, I don't want to add any other color to this, because I have three or four beautiful colors involved in it right now. Let me put this aside. Okay, now, I'm going to just have this out onto the plate. This is my side dish. And what would I serve this with? Just about anything. Anything you can imagine to have these wonderful flavors and colors look will be beautiful. Now, I'm going to set this aside. We're going to eat this when we have my soup. We're going to move on to the uh, acorn squash. Okay, that is sauteed shiitake mushrooms, red onions, and spaghetti squash. That's how simple it is to use spaghetti squash. A little bit of toughness in the beginning, but a little bit of heat will break it all down. That's a beautiful side dish that takes that many minutes to do. So let me get ready for the acorn squash. The acorn squash is still in the oven. The acorn squash is done, and this is how we have it. This is tender as well. This took a little bit of working. It's the, you can see the seasoning turn even more brown on top. Okay. I always get hollered up on my students because I don't use pot holders a lot, and I just take it right out of the pan. It's hot. I got like leather fingers. It's hot. Okay, now what I want to do with this is I'm going to make a soup from this. So I have a couple things that I want to end up using in my soup. I'm going to use leeks. I'm going to use apples. Now, to make this the way I want to, I'm going to use this squash. I'm going to remove the skin. I just roasted. So just like I took the flesh out of the spaghetti squash, I'm going to take the flesh out of here. It's a little bit easier for this because I can actually peel these down. Pretty easy. I'm actually took them out of the pan. It's a, this is a trick. When I take them out of the pan and they're sitting on the, the cutting board, I'm taking the heat away. The pan was the heating source that keeps everything hot. As I'm talking, they're actually getting cooler enough to touch. So what I want to do is I'll end up peeling these down. I can either peel them like, peel them with a peeler, peel them with a knife. I want to take the skin off the outside. One of the easiest ways, when I cut it in wedges, the easiest way for me to do it is like this where I basically just cut the flesh off. As I'm pressing down, I get all the flesh off that I need. And as I have the flesh off, I'm actually gonna put the flesh into a pot. One of my pots here, because this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna saute in this, so let me turn this on. I'm gonna use that just like I use a saute pan. I'm gonna get it hot first. I'm gonna add to that my f the flesh of most of my acorn squash because I'm going to use some as the garnish for the soup. I just want to take the flesh off. I don't need the skin. I don't need the seeds. But as I do this, you see how easy it is for me to, with really good knife skills to remove the flesh from these uh, wedges. Now some of them are actually still not tough, but they're, they don't have, they're not as like mushy soft as some of the smaller ones. So in order to get them all mushy, I actually, this actually worked out pretty well. Because some of the larger pieces like this that are more firm or more soft, I'm going to use the soft ones in the soup and the firm ones as garnish for the end of the soup. It is still hot. Remember, I just took these out of a 400 degree oven. Just because I can touch them doesn't mean everybody can. And the idea here being I want, this, I want the soft part, I want the flesh of the, the squash for the soup. Remember, I added the seasoning to the outside of the squash, so this squash has a very um, 
herby, uh, spicy smell to it. It also has color. I only need one or two of these. Now, if you look at the difference between, and I'll show you when I cut the garnish up, the difference in color between the cooked flesh and the raw flesh, you see how it darkened up considerably. This is also good to eat when it comes right out. You can use maple syrup and just have baked butternut squash and actually serve it just like this on the rind, but because I'm taking the extra step of make putting it into a soup, which is kind of cool. All right, this is my finished flesh. These are the pieces I'm going to use for garnish. These are the pieces I'm going to use for the soup. I'll take the rest of this red onion that I used for the other dish, another flavoring ingredient. I'm going to use a leek, and I'm going to use the leek for both flavor and the stock. I'm also going to use it as a finished garnish. So let me take my two garnish pieces. No, I'm going to take them anyway put them into my water so I can soak all the sand out of the bottom. That's kind of important. Okay, I'm going to use some of the green leaves for the stock, but just like everything else, in order to make that work, I actually want to get the sand out of them too. So let me use this. This is for my soup. I'll use this again when I make my garnish. I want to get the sand out because actually I don't want sand in my soup. I don't want sand in my finished product. This pan is hot. I'm going to add my, I'm going to start the saute process by adding the squash and the onions. I'll add the leeks. I'm going to saute the onions first because it's kind of important to get the onions tender and to make that cellulose change that we talked about. Get my leeks in there. Leeks add a different type of onion flavor. The finished soup will have cream. It'll have almost uh, a curry flavor. So I'll use the same ingredients I'm using curry, apples, and leeks, and the, the butternut squash. So I'm going to put the center of the apple. In the soup part, the last two I'm going to peel. I'm going to peel those two apples for the garnish piece, but in order to get the right consistency, I want these apples in my soup. I'm sauteing in butter. It's really kind of simple. Everything here only takes a amount of time to cook the apples, to cook, to make the soup. The butternut squash is already done. So let me add my, my cooked squash. All right, I saved at the end of this. I'm going to save my, my julienne. I'm going to put a, a half a fine julienne of leeks in for my garnish for the end of the soup. Or actually, I might slice them sideways because this will go better onto my spoon. The garnish of the soup is what it looks like on the, on the plate. Again, I have to rinse my leeks very, very well because I want the sand to fall out of the bottom. It's important that I peel my apples. They have machines that can peel and core and dice. They have competitions, apple peeling competitions. How long can you get one unobstructed peel or one unbroken peel all the way around? It's interesting to watch. When I grew up as a kid, I used to watch it on the TV shows. People used to do this. It was like a big deal. Um, I use, these are uh, Granny Smith apples. A lot more texture to them. They hold up well. You know, a wine sap or a, a smaller or a lighter flesh apple wouldn't hold up as well. Plus, these are tart. It's going to add to my end flavor. The flavor of the butternut squash is actually very subtle, so I really don't want something that's going to be overpowering. The apple, when it's cooked, it has a very, very nice finished flavor. This is just sauteing, getting some 
changing the nature and texture. I don't want this brown. I'll add a little bit of salt to that. Now I already have some other seasonings in it. I don't need a lot of salt. I don't have a lot of butter in it. I'm not going to thicken this sauce or the soup. Um, I'm going to keep this almost, um, almost natural, as you would call it, because when I mash up, when I put the, the squash through the food mill and the products in there in the food mill, that'll be the thickening agent. It'll be a lot more nappé is what they call it, which is a little thick, but it's only thick because of the nature of what I have in there and the condition that I have it in. All right. I'm going to peel this apple, but I'm going to dice this at the last minute when I dice the rest of my garnish. The soup doesn't take much time to cook. My stock is done. That takes the most amount of time because I have pre-done stock, and it's just a clear vegetable stock. Okay, so I have my apples. I have my leeks for my garnish. And I will saute these, this garnish before I put it in the finished soup. It's my leeks. I'm going to dice up my acorn squash, butternut squash. This is tender, but it's not mushy. This is the product that I roasted. So it was nice and hard when I put it in the oven, but right now it's actually pretty nice. It's holding its shape, which will hold up nicely in, in the soup itself. The yellow of the food dye, the turmeric, invades everything. Everything cut to the same size. It has to be kind of uniform so when it hits the, the spoon, there you don't have big chunks here and small chunks here. I want it to be nicely, beautifully uniform. Let me take a look over here. Yeah, that's enough apple. So here's my garnish for the soup. Okay, it's still going nicely. I'm going to add the rest of this apple. I'm going to put cream in here. I'm going to deglaze with cream. This is not a low-fat soup. And I'm going to finish with cream as well, but this will just take and give me a beautiful color and texture. To that, I'm going to add the salt that I'm going to get from this dish is going to come from this stock, this vegetable stock that I have reducing just enough to cover my vegetables. Now to get the soup right I'm going to turn this up to all the way up so that I get it to come up to a boil and help me reduce and minimize the amount of cellulose in all of this product so I can put it through the food mill and mash it up. To finish this I'm going to saute my garnish very lightly. I'm going to finish the soup with a little bit more turmeric, a little bit more coriander and a little bit more cumin. This is my flavoring ingredient that's going to make the soup really distinctive, but I don't want it to overpower something as subtle as the squash or something as subtle as an apple. Now it's time to saute my garnish. Let me move my stock, my soup over to the next burner. Okay, turn that up, turn that down. I'm going to get my saute pan. It's a hot saute pan. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of butter. Again, the butter adds to my caramelization. Okay, just enough to get a little bit of heat. Just enough to coat the bottom. Okay, add my garnish. That's my cooked acorn squash. My cooked, my uh, sauteed, or my cut leeks, and my, uh, my apples. Saute lightly in butter to get them to the texture that I want them for the finished soup. Okay. 
I don't need a lot of heat. I just need a little bit of heat enough to, to equalize the textures. The leek's still crunchy, the apple's still tart, and the, the acorn squash is nice and tender, but also seasoned with, this, with the coriander, the cumin, and the turmeric. Just enough to give it some heat and change that texture. I don't want to cook it in the soup. Okay. Now my soup is at the point where I can mill the soup. This piece of equipment is a food mill. This is before Cuisinart, this is what we used to use. Some people refer to things as old style, old school, the old fashioned way, but it really works. So what I'm going to do is take these beautiful vegetables and this beautiful stock and put it in this food mill, chunky stuff. Now I have this off the heat. And as I turn this, I basically mash everything that's in here into a mush and it pushes it through and this is what will thicken my soup. The squash gets mashed up, the apples get mashed up, the leeks get mashed up. They've already been softened by the cooking process. Now I'm going to smash them through and shut my varnish off. Because all I want to do is get the essence of this out of it. I don't necessarily want all this solid. Not a jumper. This is one of those things where they actually make larger food mills. This is a smaller one. Most times they're like twice the size. The different size on the bottom creates different amount of product coming out of the bottom. The more you mush it, the more you mash it, the finer the product comes out the bottom. This also strains it. So when I take big lumps of squash, big lumps of apple, this will turn into apple sauce. This is how they used to make apple sauce before they pressed it. This is the same principle as a press. It has a blade, it's not a knife, but a blade that goes across the bottom and presses the product through basically a sieve. If you've ever seen the old types of sieve that used to have the handle on it, that's basically a finer mesh of a, of a um, mill. But the more I press this, the more that comes through the bottom and we end up with a, with a really nice, now all the seeds, all the shells, all the skins, all the undesirable things that I don't want in my finished sauce or my finished soup are going to end up in the bottom of the mill. And like I said, as I turn it, I can turn it backwards and the blade will actually knife everything off that's stuck on the bottom. So this is a two directional mill. And this makes everything I have come out like mush. This is how we used to puree food. Whoa. Hey, remember I have apples, squash, onions. Ooh. All right. Now when I'm done with this, I can get more product out of here just by standing and milling this all the way through. And it'll go. The more I mill, the more it goes down, the more it mashes, the more product comes out of the bottom. If you see on the bottom, that's what the product looks like when it comes out the bottom. As I turn this and it mashes, it presses product into small, small little globules on the bottom. And this is the product that I want. It looks like baby food. In fact, this is what people make their own baby food, what it really looks like in the bottom. All right, so my finished product looks like a very, very nice, um, My finished product looks like uh, a thicker milk with a little bit of color in it. Now, the flavor is beautiful. I'm gonna put this back on the stove. I'm gonna add my garnish, okay? And I'm gonna add a little bit of cream. I'm gonna taste it and then adjust my, adjust, adjust my seasonings and then finish it. So uh, probably we got for this two quarts, maybe half a cup of cream. I'll bring it up to a boil. 
I'm going to taste it, adjust my seasonings, and then finish it. To finish it, we'll add a little bit of seasoning on the top. So, it's my two plates. I'll get a ladle. All right, it's coming up to a boil now. I want it to come up to a boil, not even simmer, but once it comes up to a boil, the sauteed and blanched garnish that I have is gonna meet up with the soup that I have just right and milled to a beautiful consistency. It's gonna be finished in the bowl and ready to eat. Now, two very simple ways to do squash. I roasted acorn squash, I seasoned it, I diced it, I added it to stock and cream with leeks and apples, and I have a butternut squash soup. It's beautiful. All right, this is ready. I'm ready to, to, pl to plate this up. I have the color of the leeks, the chunk of the apple, and the squash inside. So this is a, still a squash dish. The apples give a texture. The squash gives a texture. One acorn squash, two apples, and half an onion. About a quarter stock. I end up with enough, enough soup for about four people. Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of seasoning, and this is primarily for a look than a flavor. It'll have a flavor punch at the very end, but I'm gonna take the same three ingredients, and what I usually do is we call this a dusting. I'll hold it way up top, 18 inches above. It's gonna hit the rim of the plate, and be all right, it's aromatic. You're gonna smell this, and it makes a beautiful coating over the top. As soon as those spices hit the moisture, it'll change the first spoonful that we have of the soup and have this beautiful ending flavor for our butternut squash, or acorn squash. Butternut's different. This is my spaghetti squash with my shiitake mushrooms and my red onions. Remember, I start out with rock hard spaghetti squash, rock hard acorn squash. Roasted both of them. The finished product was two varies. I have a soup and I have a beautiful side dish. Each one of these comes from products that aren't widely used but with a little bit of culinary skill can end up being absolutely fantastic. A wonderful flavor, a flavor profile or platform to add other seasonings and other vegetables and other, and other uh, ingredients to it to punch the level of your product up by using something that's a little bit more difficult to operate than just cutting up a simple squash. Thank you for watching. This is Paul McCormick at the Culinary Arts and Hospitality Program at Community College of Philadelphia. You can catch us online.